Hey gang, Lou here from Jersey Shore Fabricators. So today in the shop, we're going to take a break from the normal projects we have and actually get the fabricating. I do a lot of car stuff. Uh, I enjoy doing car stuff, but you know, we're a fabrication shop. So today's project is going to, oops, sorry about that. Today's project is, yeah. Okay, so it's not the coolest Jeep in the world. But it's a 2015 Renegade uh, Trailhawk, I believe. And basically what the plan is, the guy does a lot of fishing. So we have to get this rack into that receiver onto this car. And sometimes some of the hardest things to do is just to figure out where to start. How am I going to get this to fit? Where does it bolt on? Uh... You know, you, 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 there's a lot of figuring out, a lot of head scratching that goes on. Case in point with this Trailhawk. Um, nobody makes a bolt-on front receiver for it. Uh, and as I said, this gentleman wants his fishing rack and cooler rack uh, mounted on the front. So, uh, we're going to make it happen. Now, there's a couple of unique issues that go on with this car. One of those issues is that if you really want to do anything major, you got to pull the whole front fascia off of this. I'm not about that. Uh, I'd, I'd like things to be bolt on and keep their functionality. So when I first got with the customer, he had said he had recommended maybe taking off these tow hooks, which I don't want to do because let's face it, this thing on the beach at some point is going to have to be towed. And although I'm building a pretty stout rack for it, I'd rather use these factory tow points. Now, there are two bolts down here, but there's a problem. One. There's a nut way back inside that uh, you actually have to go through the inner fender well to get to that nut. It is possible to do without taking it off despite what some of the factory manuals uh, say. Here's the issue. Right inside here where this bolt is, this tow hook comes to about here and there's not enough room to wiggle it to the side and pull it out. So taking the tow hooks off really isn't an option without pulling off the whole front fascia. So, after looking at this thing for a while and trying to figure out 18 different wrong ways of doing it, <clears throat> here's what I came up with. So the first thing was to figure out what kind of material I wanted to use. So I decided on 3 16 plate. Cut it out with the plasma cutter. Yeah, it's just a mock-up. It has to be cleaned up. But the way this is going to bolt on is simply like this. This is going to fit over the tow hook. The factory bolt down here is going to get tightened up. And once that gets into position, you can see that there's still room for a tow hook, you know, for a recovery hook. And then this piece coming out the side here is going to get another piece welded here with some kind of a gusset. That'll come down and go to 2x2 two two steel. And I'll show you how that's going to get done. Now, like I tell everybody, one of the first rules of fabrication is to have cardboard and scissors. Make yourself a template. It's a lot cheaper to cut cardboard than it is steel. So, I'm going to trace this out. Like so. And then we're going to fire up the plasma cutter. This piece bolts to the truck. Sorry. Uh, this piece bolts to the truck just like this. And then this piece is going to get welded on just like that. And that way when it goes back on the truck, you can still access this bolt hole. You can still access this bolt hole. Uh, and this will clear the tow hook without any issues. And then off of here is where we're going to build the two by two to go to um, the hitch. Now one other tip, when you're making identical pieces, in my case I need four pieces, two each to be the same, one for each side of the vehicle. Um, the piece that mounts to the vehicle, 
it doesn't make a difference uh, which way it goes in this sense uh, it's just going to get mirrored for the other side so before you start tacking everything together don't get too far ahead of yourself you need to think ahead a little bit go ahead and make templates so that you have reference that way you don't have to cut this apart and then or try to remeasure everything everything we know is good with those two we already made our templates so we'll go ahead and cut those out and then we can mock everything up all at the same time okay so if you've ever made more than one of anything and you're cutting it out by hand and not using uh, one of them there fancy plasma tables which I don't have uh, you're gonna find that you're gonna get a little bit of a deviation between what you patterned and what you actually cut so here's how I deal with it so what I'll do is I'll take the pieces and I'll get them on a nice flat piece of steel and I'll make sure two corners are lined up with each other so we have the back and the bottom are lined up with each other they're perfect matches and then I'll set them up with a pair of vice grips to hold them together and then I'll set them up in my vise that way I know that they can't move so as I said this bottom edge here I know is flush this back edge here I know is flush so now comes the magic part we take this off and then I will take my grinder and I will grind the bigger of the two down to the smaller of the two because in this kind of fitment if it's a little bit smaller that's okay uh, and then we have two identical pieces and after about four minutes of grinding we have two identical pieces and I already went ahead and made our, my pilot hole for the mounting hole. Now, as you can see, it's not the hardest thing to do. People have been cutting steel for years. There's just some faster ways and better ways of doing it. Uh, are my ways perfect? No. But they work for me. They work for the tools I have in the shop here. Uh, and I haven't had any complaints or had anything fall apart. One other last thing. When you plasma cut steel, you're actually changing the temper of the steel. You're changing the hardness of the steel. So when you go to grind, uh, make sure you have your hearing protection, make sure you have eye protection, because it's going to throw sparks all over the place. But it's also going to eat up grinding discs, especially if you have rough edges like I showed you over there. Uh, you will go through them fairly quickly, especially if you're doing a long piece of metal. These are just mounting tabs. There, there's really nothing to them. Uh, if I had a water jet, if I had a uh, plasma table, uh, with a real good plasma cutter, uh, I'm sure I wouldn't have all the cleanup that I have. Uh, but again, it's what I have in the shop here, that's what I have to work with. If you're using a cutting disc, you won't have as much cleanup uh, from slag and rough edges. You just got to make sure that you're very careful with it, don't cut yourself. Uh, make sure that you're following the lines that you laid out. So like I said, if you just think ahead a little bit, um, think of your next step. How are things going to go together? How are they going to come off? You can sit down, plan it out, and fabricate anything on your own. Okay, so we have uh, our measurements, and I already started mocking everything up. Now, when you're working with thick steel, like that, or like that, this is 2 by 2 3 16 wall, uh, or... Yeah, I believe it is. You'll notice down here I put a 45 I put a 45 degree bevel. All right, that's to let the weld penetrate. Now, depending on what kind of weld you weld you have, you're going to have to make adjustments. Uh, my welder is 135 amps. So, I think we're going to turn it up to 11. And throw a couple of tacks in it and we'll see how it goes. Well, for now, we got a couple of tacks in it. I'm going to go throw it on a vehicle and make sure it's still centered. Okay, so now i got everything mocked up, tacked in, and really happy with the way it turned out. So now I'll pull it off the car, we'll do all the finish welds, grind it down, sand it, and, uh, well, we'll try out the rack on it. Well, now at this point, I am done. So, 
One of the, once everything is finish welded, one of the things I like to do is go over the whole thing with a flap wheel on a grinder. Get any uh, uh, spatter off that might be on there. Just kind of prep the surface for paint. So at this point, uh, well, let me go get it painted. And so now here we are all done. Painted, racks mounted, everything looks good. Kind of disappears into the front of the car there. Which is nice and more importantly still have full use of the tow hooks exactly the way I wanted it well with everything finished that puts an end to this um, so what did I do this there's an old saying that with a welder and a grinder all things are possible and they are this is a very simple project today. Uh, it took a little longer than I wanted to between, you know, taking pictures, doing videos, all that. But you know, all in all, very happy with it. I'm sure the customer is going to be happy with it. And uh, I'll tell you what, with the exception of uh, maybe straightening up a couple of corners, I'd say it's just as good as Mopar could have done. Well, that's the end of this. Stay tuned. Uh, click, you know, give us a like. Click the subscribe button, please. Uh, doesn't cost you a dime to do it. Uh, we're still not getting anything for free. So, you know, like I said, everything that I show you uh, is all stuff that we're paying for. Why we do it? Uh, well, so that you know that with a little time, a little ingenuity, and a couple of tools, you can build whatever you want. Now, get out there and build yourself something. Peace.